Amanda Lundeteg, and I'm the CEO of the Albright Foundation, dedicated to increase the number of women in senior positions. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Richard Fagin for inviting me to speak on the topic of sex. And I'm going to talk to you about how to increase the number of women in powerful positions. Um, so I don't have a microphone today, so if you can't hear me, come, please come closer, okay? Or wave and I will speak up louder. So I would like to start with some expected and rhetorical questions. There's a lot of women in here, so but how many of the women in here are a female boss today? Please raise your hand. One. Okay, so three. Three bosses. And to all of you, how many of you have a female boss today? Oh my god, <laughs> I did not expect that. Usually when I talk, it's business people sitting in the audience and they never have female bosses. So you guys, you're quite good. But in a way, you reflect the image of how common or let's say uncommon it is to have women in senior positions because women are absolutely underrepresented in positions of power across several spheres, several employment spheres. In 2012, Uppsala University conducted a study investigating the number of women in senior positions within eight different spheres. The numbers speak for themselves Many people were surprised, even me, working with the issues. Did you know that the church has more women in powerful position than the business sector? The business sector has only around 10%, while the church has a 23% representation. The media, a 36% representation. Non-governmental organizations, 39. And the creative sector, that's you guys, a whooping 36%. So you are way better than the business sector, but still, it's only 36%. Academia, government, and politics are the best. They all manage to have over 40%, although none of them reaches over 50%. So if we average all the areas, we end up at a 37% representation. With the business sector being the worst, with its 10%. So as you can see, this is an extensive structure problem, evidenced across many different uh, employment spheres. Even though women have been in majority at universities, performing better academically, than men for several decades. So at Albright, we're trying to change this. We want to increase the number of women holding senior positions. And we believe that this is possible by applying a meritocratic perspective. And a meritocratic perspective means that we need to start promoting on merits and not on stuff like body network, like who you know. And it means that we need to reevaluate what competence actually is and how we measure it. And it also means to break down gender stereotypes, okay? So 
In our work, I have not yet met one single business leader who doesn't think that this is an important issue. Everyone says that this is so important. It's such an obvious issue for some business leaders that we don't even need to talk about it. Some people think that we shouldn't work with this. But to me, this is a paradox, because if everyone really thought that gender equality and gender representation is an important issue, then I wouldn't be here talking today, right? Okay, so we need to be aware of that there is clearly a resistance and above all, there's an ignorance about how unequal we actually are and what we can do in order to change the situation so that all individuals can reach their full potential. Not just only men, but also you in here, the women and your girlfriends and your sisters and mothers and children, your upcoming daughters or your daughters. Okay. So why is it then? Why are we so unequal? Well, the lack of knowledge about how norms and stereotypes and gender roles are created, that's a big part of the answer. And this starts really very early on. Already at the hospital, we have the midwife going, ooh, what a big, strong baby boy, or ooh, what a precious little girl depending on the gender. We speak differently to boys and girls depending on the gender. So we give boys and girls different characteristics. And this just continues. We, in preschool, we see how preschool teachers are spending more time in helping the boys getting dressed. And what are the girls doing? They are actually helping the preschool teachers out when dressing the boys. And I'm a godmother to a boy named Hampus. Hampus, he's now nine years old, right? Nine. And when Hampus was four years old, he nagged like a maniac wanting a pair of pink rubber boots. And Hampus ended up getting his pink rubber boots. When Hampus turned five, one year later, his father thought it was a good idea for Hampus to wear the pink rubber boots on a rainy day. But no way would Hampus go around in shoes for girls. So in just one year, Hampus had somehow learned that pink is a girl color and girly things are less cool. And as I said, this just continues. Mm, and it's quite noticeable in how we use our language. For example, in, when engaging in sports, we often hear stuff like pussies or cunts if someone is doing something really bad. So female words are connected to bad stuff and being weak. And not so long ago, I heard a joke from a businessman saying, that he did not want to have a woman in the boardroom because he didn't want to lower the intellectual thinking within that boardroom. It was probably just a joke, but all these jokes and comments and words that are going around has an impact on our minds. And it creates ideas about what men and women are and what men and women are fit to do. So, knowledge about how norms and stereotypes are created needs to be in everyone's consciousness. And this is a big step towards gender equality. Okay, so gender equality is an important issue. Everyone in here believes that, right? Yeah. But why is gender representation such an important issue? Some people think that gender representation is only for white, academic, middle-class women. But it's not. At Albright, we're, we want to see a 
variety or the diversity of women reaching senior positions. This will generate better conditions for all women and women interests will be taken in consideration if more women reaches uh, top positions. It's easy to assume that if we see women in um, top positions at adver advertising agencies, for example, we will probably see less sexism in commercials. And if 80% of the men uh, weren't represented in the district court judges, this would probably also have an effect on the legal system concerning sexual abuse or domestic violence. And then there's just uh, a matter of justice. Uh, women are not a minority group. We're actually in the majority, 51%. So we should be represented till about 50% on top positions. And this will, of course, not only benefit women. It will also be good for men. Because our view of how a man should be is very, very limited now. And with gender equality, this will expand and diversify as men can focus less on bringing home meat to the cave and more on being a good role model for our children. So there's the justice reason. Then there's the profitability reason. International science shows that companies who have women at the top are also more profitable businesses. They have a higher return on equity, a higher return on invested capital, and they are less likely to go bankrupt. So business leaders saying no to women are actually saying no to potential growth. So we have justice and we have profitability. Then there are some people who claim that there are no women. There are not enough qualified women. And that it's a matter about either quality or equality. But luckily, I have some good news. Quality and equality are not in opposition to each other. On the contrary, if we start to see the potential in, the, in every human being, we will utilize lots of skills. And then we need to stop saying that there aren't enough capable or talented women, because there are. At Albright, we have access to thousands of women who are ready to take on leadership positions. So if you ever hear a business leader uh, who, or someone who is trying to recruit but can't find women, just tell him or her, it's probably a him, uh, that uh, there are. You just need to go and look elsewhere and tell, tell the person to contact Albright. So justice, profitability, and utilization of skills, three important reasons to why gender representation is an important issue. Okay, so now we have our goals set. But how do we work in order to change the situation? And this is the fun part. Um, you can work in a little bit different ways. At Albright, we're working with some kind of controversial methods, such as naming and shaming, for example. We also work to give lectures and we investigate companies. We produce reports. So since 2011, we produced five reports. And in the reports, we list the public companies from best to worst in having women on their in executive management teams. And all the companies that don't have one single woman, woman in their executive management team are placed on a blacklist. 
and we do campaigns in order to reach business leaders' attention. And we look at the listed companies because the listed companies have a lot of capital, they're huge companies, big companies affecting many people's lives, and they, um, they are also forced to share a lot of information, so it's quite easy to investigate them. So, we make the blacklist with the companies that we call bad, and we go out to media and tell media about all these companies who don't, don't have one single woman in their uh, executive management team. And uh, this year, when we released the Albright Report 2014, we also went out to all major universities in Sweden, uh, giving, them the black, giving students the blacklist with this text saying, hi student, we have listed the companies you don't want to apply uh, for work at. And this, of course, um, made a lot of business leaders angry. So people called me and emailed me, um, told me that they didn't like to be on the blacklist, of course. And I have to admit that I was not prepared to be such an anti-darling among CEOs for doing this. But if this is what captures business leaders' attention, then it's definitely worth it. Okay, so that is a little bit about how Albright works. Then we need to add this, that in the debate, we often talk about what women should do in order to change the situation so that we will become more equal. Like stuff like women should get tougher, women need to show off more, women need to brag more, women need to talk about themselves more, women need to support other women more, and women need to stop bad talking other women. Sheryl Sandberg, the CEO of Facebook, she even wrote a book on the subject called Lean In, and it aims to encourage women to take part. And sure, I agree with Sandberg, it's great if women engage in all of this, but this is not a problem that women hold alone. This is a problem for both men and women, and men and women need to work together in order to solve this problem, right? So I would like to share some of my favorite things that men can do in order to work together with women in order to reach gender equality. So now you're a lot of women in here, so you need to go out later on and take your, talk to your favorite man about my favorite things. One cool thing men can engage in is that if you're invited to some kind of professional gathering consisting of only men, say, no thank you. I think you have enough undersar like me, but I recommend you to contact Amira instead. She's just as good as me. So recommend women in your network. And also, if you're a man, make sure that you have at least two role models who are women or mentors, there to be inspired by women and women leadership. That's good for everyone. And also, if you're in a position where you can promote or hire women, make sure you do it, because in the end, it's only by replacing men with women that will lead to more women in powerful positions. And then there's just some common sense, like don't interrupt women when women talk, take a little bit less space, you know. I'm sure the men in here already does do that, but the men outside tell them that. So, while Sheryl Sandberg says, lean in to all women out there, I would like to balance up by saying lean out to all men out there. And to all of you, remember you can be the change you wish to see in the world. Thank you.